2019 NFL Draft is now officially open. You don't really know what's going to happen. You're, you know, your agent can kind of tell you and hopefully prognosticate a little bit what's going to happen. But I think that it makes it especially nerve-wracking because the, the projections were so all over the place. The NFL is evolving. But every team's going to need at least one Ben Burkhurvin. This kid is something special. May become one of the biggest deals of the 2019 NFL Draft. The Seattle Seahawks select. When you think of the hometown of a future NFL star, you might think of Southern California, West Texas, South Florida, or perhaps the coal towns of Western Pennsylvania. Let's face it, the first location off your tongue isn't Silicon Valley, and it isn't Sacred Heart Prep. Founded in 1898, the tiny Catholic school in Atherton, California was originally a boarding school for girls. Finally, in 1984, more than 80 years after its start, Sacred Heart Prep began to admit boys. It wasn't until its 100th anniversary in 1998 that the school introduced its first ever football team. I just wanted to go to a school that would have um, a football program that I thought would be good. In terms of the academics, it was probably the best of the places I was looking at. And in terms of football, I felt like it was a place where I'd have a good opportunity to get to play at the next level. Despite becoming one of the greatest football players known to come from Northern California in the past 10 years, first impressions of Ben Burkirvan weren't always what you'd expect. The one characteristic that stood out was his hair. Man, what a tiny kid uh, with all the flowing long hair. I just heard about this sunshine kid and he had this long blonde hair. But he was tiny. But my sons had told me that from two days, uh, he was special. His quickness and his speed to the ball, especially, was noticeable right away. And even though I thought he was going to be a good high school football player, I really didn't know what impact he was going to have moving forward. It's, it's almost as though Ben made every tackle. I think in every game, Ben was involved in some instrumental tackle or catch or run. His sophomore, junior, and senior year, 12, 13, and 14, they were 38 and 3. Playing in 35 varsity games as a three-year starter for SHP, Burke Kirvin recorded a combined total of 238 tackles as well as 15 sacks and six interceptions. Our final game against Bellarmine in the CCS Open Championship. And our team was a huge underdog. I essentially told not even to show up. That there's some question about whether or not we should even be playing Bellarmine. Not our kids were going to get hurt. We're playing against the sort of perennial power. Everyone laughed at us. We'd never been in the Open Division. We were supposed to get, you know, clobbered by the WCL guys. And... It was supposed to be the end of the road for this great team. Um, and what ended up happening actually we shut them down. They couldn't really do anything on offense. They maybe passed 50 once or twice, so. And Ben was everywhere. And they just couldn't move the ball. When we needed to do something, Ben would do it. They just got stopped. It was not 14 nothing, and we barely won. It was 14 nothing, and we stomped on them. Sacred Heart Prep ending its season undefeated at 13-0. Very emotional tonight. Why is that? I mean, it's the culmination of four years of hard work, and I mean, We've put so much into this, and to win the Open Division Championship, I mean, this is bigger than anything. I mean, we shut everyone up tonight. No one, no one ever says anything about us again. We just beat a WCL football team, and we were able to impose our will all night. I mean, we shut them out. Congratulations, Ben. Congratulations, Sacred Heart Prep Gators, Open Division champs. Despite all he accomplished at Sacred Heart, Burke Kirvin's college recruiting process was anything but a smooth ride for the undersized linebacker. When he had gone to the camps, everybody tried to convert him into a safety. To me, I was assumed he wasn't big enough to be a linebacker. You know, I was assumed he was going to end up playing safety. He's fast. He's super smart. He moves incredibly well on the field. And 
but what came out of that was he did not have safety DNA. He, God made him a linebacker. What was clear is that Ben wants to play linebacker. Finally, on September 14, 2014, Ben Burkhoven committed to the University of Washington. I just went up there and met the coaching staff and they talked to Coach Pete and um, he just reminded me a lot of Coach Lobb. They have a program up there called Men, um, and so we have Men Built for this year and then they had Built for Life up there and it was really similar principles. So from, you know, outside of just the football side, it just felt, it felt comfortable. Especially in a small town like this, where you don't get a lot of Pac-12 SEC Big Ten football players. So for Ben to be committed to play at that caliber was really exciting. Chris Peterson, made the commitment to him at Washington. And he wanted to play in the NFL and he wanted to be a linebacker. So that path, playing for Peterson and, and being a linebacker is what he wanted to do. And it makes perfect sense. When Ben Burkirvan arrived at the University of Washington, the Huskies were in the midst of a cultural change, largely driven by the arrival of head coach Chris Peterson the prior year. I mean, my freshman year I played uh, mostly just special teams, did some spot duty on defense, and then we were, we were not great. We, uh, we were 6-6. Six and six. We made a bowl. We won our bowl games. We ended up being 7-6, and six, but it was a pretty rough year. We, it was frustrating because, you know, we felt like we should be winning. We were playing good ball, and we were right there so many times. I don't know. Going into that next year, there was just a different feeling, and we ended up being real good. We went 12-1. and one. We won the Pac-12, um, went and played Alabama, and that was crazy, you know, to go play, you know, Alabama down in... Um, down in the south, we played in Georgia and basically in enemy territory and to hear, you know, all the SEC chants and all this stuff and they got after us pretty good, but I think, um, you know, for an experience it was one of the most incredible things you could ever imagine. I mean, it's a lot of NFL talent on that field and, you know, to be there as, you know, just a sophomore, it was, it was a pretty special experience. In August training camp before his junior year, Burke Kirvin found himself in a heated competition for a starting role. The Huskies kicked off the 2017 season by traveling cross country to play the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Our, our starting linebacker was suspended for the first game of my, my junior year, and so I ended up starting that game and I played well. coming through there to make the stop. We kind of split time. He was starting. We were probably playing 50-50 in terms of reps, and then I think it was game five or six. We had a we had a bye week after that, and then after the bye week, uh, I started the rest of the way. Falk over the middle gets picked off. It's Ben Burkirvin, third interception of the day for Washington. Ben Burkirvin finished 2017 with 84 tackles, leading the team. The Huskies would go on to finish 10 and three, make an appearance in the Fiesta Bowl against the Penn State Nittany Lions. After being voted team captain, BBK returned to the Huskies for his senior season. And I really just wanted to, to enjoy one more year with my friends, and, and that was kind of the best part about college ball is and you get to stay with the same guys. You know, you kind of come in as a, a family when you're, you're recruited as freshmen, and you, you ride through. So there's guys, you know, that for four years were, you know, were pretty much all you'd see every single day. So for me, that last year was just about enjoying, you know, the time with those guys and getting to, to keep playing ball and being proud to be a Husky. Has been snapped it at 10, and he'll be hit and hammered. Roberts is in trouble and sacked. Ben Burkirvin lofts it up, picked off by Ben Burkirvin. Ball's loose, Burkirvin jumps on it. The swing pass to Smith. Lost the football. All three timeouts for the boss. That ball's picked off and just might do it. Ben Burkirvin, 15 tackles, a pass breakup, and an interception that he takes back 21 yards. As a senior in 2018, Burr Kirvin led the entire college football nation with 176 tackles, in addition to two interceptions, four forced fumbles, and three recoveries. The Huskies finished the year with 10 wins, enough to win the Pac-12 championship, and earned an appearance in the Rose Bowl. So we would have liked to, to win the Rose Bowl, but in terms of the season, you know, it, was, it was really special. We had, um, 
we had some tough losses here and there, but at the end of the day, I mean, we won the Pac-12 title and we went to the Rose Bowl and, you know, I had a, I had a good year individually, but I mean, it, it was just cool. Despite leading the nation in tackles and inspiring his team to a Pac-12 championship and Rose Bowl appearance, Ben was overlooked and underestimated once again, this time by NFL scouts, who questioned whether he had the size to be an NFL linebacker. A short stepper when I watched him on tape. He's getting out a little bit better than that. He's had some work on it, DJ. That's a great time. At the NFL Combine in May 2019, Ben burr Curvin turned heads. He led all linebackers in the three-cone drill, was top five in the 40-yard dash, and even top 10 in the bench press. And finally, it was on to the NFL Draft. The 2019 NFL Draft is now officially open. You don't really know what's going to happen. Your, you know, your agent can kind of tell you and hopefully prognosticate a little bit what's going to happen. But especially for someone like me where, you know, I had the production, but physically and stuff like that, I wasn't quite, um, you know, the prototypical prospect. I think that it makes it especially nerve-wracking because the, the projections were so all over the place. The NFL is evolving. Uh, I had spoken with my oldest son who's into sports and he's of the opinion that every team's going to need at least one Ben Burkhurvin in about three years and if you know Ben may be coming out a little bit early. Hello? BBK. How you doing? What's up, man? It's John Schneider. Good to hear from you. Yeah, buddy. Hey, come right across the water, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to select you right here, partner. That sounds awesome. Thank you. Hey, Ben. Congratulations. How about staying home, huh? Yeah, it's awesome. That makes life a lot easier. Yeah, it does. It does. The Seattle Seahawks drafted Ben Burkirvan in the fifth round with the 142nd overall pick. It was awesome. You know, I saw the, I recognized the area code on the phone when they called me, and I didn't think, I didn't think they would take me because they drafted a, another linebacker earlier in the draft. But uh, when I saw that number, I knew that it was the only, only team it could be, and it was, you know, an amazing feeling to get to stay in a place that's been my home, you know, for the last four years. And so, getting to stay there, it really couldn't have worked out any better. I mean, with the, the veteran leadership in the linebacker room, the coaching staff, it was kind of a, the perfect transition. I saw what their linebackers looked like. Saw what their draft picks looked like and thought, okay, this, this is a great landing spot. When I realized he was going to play on Sundays, I was just so happy for him because there's no one more deserving than Ben. When he was 10 years old, he told his mom he was going to play in the NFL. Yeah, she just kind of rolled her eyes and said, whatever. He was athletic, et cetera. He wasn't very big, but he kept building towards that. Ben was someone that consistently, almost as like an underdog, was achieving, working hard, and relentlessly becoming as good as he knew he could be. There's a lot of really good athletes and a lot of people that want to play football. I think almost all athletes at some point, you know, if they could be a football player, that's what they'd want to do. But I think that uh, football is just a different sport. I mean, there's an attitude required to go out there and, and do this game and, and take the hits and give out the hits that you do. And I think that the best players I've ever seen haven't always been the best athletes or the best talents. It's been the guys that, that are willing to basically go out there and die on the field for the guys next to them. And I think that the way that, the way that people carry themselves and the way that people care for the game is the thing that puts people over the edge.